Hi everyone, I'm Anne. I'm working at the University of Oslo and together we'll go through the Galaxy 101 for Everyone tutorial from the Galaxy training. So where can we find this Galaxy training? It's uh, in the training galaxyproject.org and introduction to Galaxy analysis and Galaxy 101 for Everyone. So all the training material look uh, the same. You will always have at the top this panel um, with the question, the scientific question we want to answer. And uh, here this is what are the differences uh, between the iris species and I will explain you later on uh, what, uh, what it is about and the objectives of the lesson. So we'll uh, familiarize uh, uh, ourselves with the basics of Galaxy. We we'll learn how to import data for, uh, from external sources, uh, how to tag data sets, how to run tools, uh, how to use histories, galaxy histories, how to create a workflow and share work. So this tutorial takes about one hour and a half and we'll go through step by step. Um, here you can see all the different galaxy instances you can use for running this tutorial. If you left click, you can see most of them uh, can run this uh, basic Galaxy 101 for everyone tutorial. I will be using the use galaxy.org, the main instance. Um, so if I go here, uh, one of the first step uh, will be to register and to log in. But let's see, look at the interface first. Here you have the left panel, which is a tool panel with all the different tools, Galaxy tools. Uh, we'll be using a few of them. This is the main panel where everything uh, will uh, go on, mostly when you run tools and uh, when you inspect data sets. And by default, you end up in the landing page with uh, news and information about the Galaxy project and the Galaxy instance. And on the right panel, you have the history panel, which is here empty. Um, we need to log in. So we need to register. If you haven't uh, uh, registered yet, I will click on this login and register. If you don't have an account yet, you need to register, uh, put your email address, password, and the public name. Once uh, um, you will, once create, you click on the create button, you will get uh, email confirmation. It can take a few hours um, and then you will be able to log in. So I have already an account, so I will log in to this Galaxy instance. And there is no differences between uh, what we had before and what we have now, except at the top here, if I click on user, I can see I'm logged in and this is what we want. And actually now I can close the panel for this tutorial because what we will be using is this very nice feature here. If I click, I actually get the training, Galaxy training uh, website with all the different training. And I can click on introduction to galaxy analysis. And again, find uh, this galaxy 101 for everyone. So nice because we have these two panel here. I have this galaxy 101 for everyone. And if I click on this external panel, I go back to my galaxy instance. So let's have a look again to the galaxy 101 tutorial. Um, so the you have some introduction uh, and the background. So we'll be using a Iris Flower data set. Uh, you can get some more information uh, looking, uh, reading the paper, Fisher paper from 1936 and some more information on the wiki page here, if I look at it. So this is a tabular data set and each row will contain one flower. And uh, um, we have a flower with uh, different uh, uh, characteristics. They are all iris flowers, but um, depending on the uh, size of the lens, uh, petal lens or sepal uh, lens or width, it will be a different uh, species of iris. And this is what we will try to analyze in, uh, in this tutorial. It's closed. You can read for more if you want to. Uh, so we have login and register, and uh, we have looked through this different panel with the tools, main and history. 
and now we will create a history. And this is really good practice. When we start an analysis in Galaxy, it's really a good practice to start with a clean history and have only the data set uh, and uh, all of the analysis as uh, results of the tools you have used for this analysis. Because we'll see later when we'll create a workflow from the history, it will be much easier. It will only contain your, uh, the steps of your analysis. So we'll do this part where we'll create a new history and uh, we'll name the history Galaxy 101 for everyone. So I click here to get back to my uh, uh, Galaxy instance and you see this plus button here. So it's loading. And uh, to change the name, I click on the name left clip and I change, I passed Galaxy Galaxy 101 for everyone. So to be effective, you need to click on enter. If you don't, uh, it will not rename your history. So we have renamed the history. Let's go back here. Next step is to upload the iris data set. So um, you see this little button here, copy. I will click on it and it will copy this line into your uh, browser. You can go here in the upload data and past and fetch data, and you can past it. And you can start. and close. It will appear, it takes a bit of time. Sometimes you need to refresh. Yeah. So when it's gray, it means it's, uh, your task is queued. Uh, and now you see it has changed uh, from gray to orange. And it means it's running and you can see because it's spinning here. And once this is done, uh, it will turn to green if uh, the task is successful and red if it uh, fails. So now it's green and we can see we have the data set. And the next step will be to rename the data set. Um, so this is what we explain here in the next step. So we have uh, upload the data set and now we are renaming the data set to Iris. And uh, we also check the data type, make sure this is CSV for comma separated uh, value. Uh, if not, we'll uh, change the data uh, type uh, to make sure it is well handled as a CSV file. Uh, and we'll add a tag, which is an iris tag. And uh, to make sure the tag is propagated to all the different data sets using uh, this uh, uh, data set uh, uh, as an input, for instance, uh, uh, an input to a tool. Uh, you want the output of the tools to have this uh, the same tag, so we use this hash in front of it. I will show you just right now. So now we need to rename the data set, uh, mostly because uh, you see this very long name uh, with an address, a web address. It's not very convenient, and in addition, some Galaxy tools do not work when we have this uh, complex name. So I change the name here and I click on save. Then it will change it. I will check the format. So this format is CSV and it is correct. Uh, you can change here in the data types tab and you could eventually change to the right type and click on change data type if this is not correct. So here this is CSV, so we are all set. Last step is to is to add a tag. So to add a tag, I can edit dataset tags. And then I can add a tag here. And remember, I said we need to use this hash tag and the iris. And I enter. It will take a bit of time to be effective. I can, yeah, and now I have it, Oops. it's refreshing. So we have the iris uh, tag here, uh, right name, and uh, I all set. So now I can start my analysis. 
So we'll do some pre-processing on the data set. We'll uh, convert the data set from a CSV file to a tabular. So why do we do that? Because many tools in Galaxy uses, uh, they use tabular format instead of CSV. So this is much more convenient to always convert your CSV file to a tab separated value. So for this, we'll go to the convert panel uh, when we click on the edit uh, button and we'll convert from CSV to tabular. And again, we will rename the data set. Always good practice to rename the data set to have meaningful name. This is much easier uh, to go through your history. Uh, and we'll uh, answer to the question, how many header file, header lines do we, does uh, our file have? So how many headers do we have? Let's go back here. So what we need to do first, convert from CSV to tabular, rename the data set, and then answer the question. I click here, edit attributes. I convert tab and here convert from CSV to tabular. I click on convert. And you see, and now I get a new data set. So every time we do a process or an analysis on a, a data set, we or run a tool, we get a new data set in the history. It is running now, so I will wait and I will rename the data set to have a much more meaningful name. And I will rename the data set to, um, to Iris Tabular. And Okay. And I click on save. Yeah, so now I have a new data set, Iris Tabula, and you see the tag Iris has been propagated from this data set to this one because uh, this data set has used this data set for, uh, the, uh, for the analysis. It's just a conversion here. So can we answer to the question, how many uh, header lines do we have in this data set? I will click on the eye here, which is view data. Depending on the size of the data set, it can take more or less time. Yeah, and now I can see all the different values with uh, uh, sepal lens, sepal width, petal lens, petal width, and the species here on the last column. So we have only one header, which is a column name of uh, each row, uh, of each uh, column. Let's go back to the next step now. We'll do some uh, real analysis. It's time to run our first tool. Um, and uh, what we will do is uh, we will remove the header because many of the different tools we want to use would uh, not uh, be able to run with uh, this header. And we know we have one header line. So uh, to find the tool, you can uh, use this search bar here and uh, type the name uh, of a tool and to search it. When you are running a tutorial, this is a very nice feature, you can click here and you will get access directly to the tool. So we'll run this tool, which is a remove beginning uh, with the following parameter. So we'll uh, remove the first line because we want to remove the header and uh, we'll select the Iris tabula. Uh, now we are running with uh, Iris tabula uh, data set and we'll click on execute. So, and uh, the next step will be to rename uh, from uh, the result of the uh, tool to Iris Clean. So let's do that. We'll click here, left click on Remove Beginning. Yes, so we'll remove the first line. We'll take the Iris Tabular, 
yes. And we can click on execute. If you want to get a notification, you can select here, uh, yes, and then you will get a notification when the tool, uh, your tool has run and finished, which is uh, very useful if a tool is, uh, is quite long. So here I click on it, it will run. It's running already. And remember, I will rename the data set here. I can check it. I with I, I can see there is no header anymore and I rename it to Iris Clean and I save. Yeah, and again, you see this uh, tag Iris has been propagated because uh, it used originally a data set having this tag as an input to this uh, uh, remove beginning. So let's uh, go back here. I rename the data set and can we answer to this question? So um, which tags are present on the resulting data set and uh, um, how many sample lines does our data set contain? So I have already answered to this uh, first question. which is uh, uh, the number of uh, tags you have. And uh, we have always this uh, uh, iris tag because we have put this hash sign in front of it when we first uh, added the tag here. So it's always propagated. Uh, let's see how many lines do we have. Uh, here it is written, we have 150 lines. So this is very handy. So you, you can also see some of the line here. Um, so we have already answered to the questions here. Let's go to the analysis part. Uh, and uh, in the analysis part, uh, we want to answer to the question, what does the data set contain? So how many different species are in the data set? For this, uh, we will uh, remove, uh, so we'll, we will uh, select the column uh, and cut by column and uh, we'll uh, look at the colon five, so why colon five? So if I look here, one, two, three, four, five. So this is where we have the name of the species. And remember, we want to, at the end to have a workflow. So we want to automate all the different steps. So we need to look at this colon. And uh, we see that uh, sometimes this, the name is changing for cit from Cetosa to Versicolor and Virginica, which are the different names of the species. So we want to select this colon and we want to have a unique values uh, to avoid the repetition many times of uh, the different species. Um, so how do we do that? We will first use a tool which is a cut. Uh, so to uh, cut the colon from the table and take the colon five, uh, we'll say that uh, uh, we have a tabular data set. It's still tabular, even if now we have no header. And we will rename the resulting data set to uh, Iris species colon. So we'll, I copy here for the name. And then the second tools we will be using, because we will have only the uh, fifth column, so the, all the different names, we'll, make a, 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 we'll use a new tool, which is unique to uh, get only the different uh, values, unique values uh, on this column. So let's do that first. I get the cut. And here I will get a C5, a C tabulator, and I start from the iris clean. And remember, we need to rename the data set to iris species colon. I can make it faster by copying again. It's running, can inspect it, and I can see 
I have only the last colon. Let's rename it. Always good practice. To iris species colon, and I save. Again, I see the tag has been propagated. And the next step is to have uh, unique values in this data set because we have a repetition many times of each different uh, species. So if I go back here, I will use this tool, which is unique. Uh, and I will uh, get as an input this uh, iris species column, which is a result of the previous tool. Um, and uh, then I will execute this uh, tool and rename the output to iris species. So then I will uh, try to answer to the question, how many different species are in the data set and what are the different iris species? Let's click on this unique tool. Uh, yes, iris species. Um, and I click on execute. So it's great, it's cute. And I can rename the data set, always good practice, you remember, to iris species, because this is what uh, this data set contain, contains now. Yes, again, I have this iris tag, which is very nice. If I click on the eye, I can see. So um, we can now answer how many different species are in the data set. We have three species, which are the three lines. And the species are Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. So we have answer to the question here. And you can always check with the solution. You see here, you can expand the solution. So uh, what, uh, what we can, could also do is um, use different tools. And this is very uh, classical in Galaxy. There is uh, so many different tools that uh, most of the time, uh, one question can be answered with uh, different tools. So here, for instance, uh, instead of using this cut and unique tool, we could have used this grouping dataset tool, which is a group dataset by column and aggregate. So here, for instance, if we want to use this group data, you can use this group data. Uh, and if you group the data, we, you will group the data uh, by colon five. And you will not take the iris species. You will take the iris clean data set and you will get the colon five. And you click on the execute. So it's a different way to have the same answer uh, to our question. It's running now. And I will rename data set. Once this is finished. finished now, can edit attributes and I will uh, 
call it iris species group and I save. So if I put the eye, you see I get exactly the same kind of uh, output as before with only one tool, Cetosa, Verti, Versicolor and Virginica. So I can answer to this uh, same question, but I used a different tool, which is a group tool, very useful tool. So the next question we will ask is uh, how many samples by species are in the data set? So now we know we have three different uh, species in our data set, but um, we want to know how many we have per category. So uh, again, we will have to look at this uh, column five, but uh, instead of uh, selecting unique values, uh, we will have to count how many we have on each category. So the group tool, if you remember, the, the tool we just used is quite useful and uh, we'll use the same tool, but we we'll look at it a bit uh, more closely and see if we can uh, get some more option to uh, gather and count the number of uh, species. So let's do that. Uh, we'll go back to the training material here and uh, we'll uh, go here, how many samples by species are in the data set and we'll use this group tool. So the same tool. So we can rerun actually the same tool as before. Uh, and we'll use a new operation, which is insert operation, and we'll use it type count and on colon one. So we mostly want to count the number of rows we have for each category. Uh, otherwise, the rest will be uh, the, the same. Colon five for uh, selecting, and uh, we count. Uh, this. Let's go back here. So for rerunning, we can take the last tool and click here, rerun this job again. Very handy. You have exactly the same parameter, same input data set as before, but we'll uh, insert an operation here, which is not the mean, but which is a count. And we execute. And we'll see if we can answer to the question, how many samples per species are in the data set? So now it's gray. Uh, it will need to run, it's running. And as usual, we will rename the data set once this is uh, finished. Rename data set. And we will rename the data set, for instance, to iris samples per species group. Again, save and click on save to save it. And I can look now to my data set. And what do I see? I see that for each category, I have a number. And this number is actually the number of sample per species. So. Uh, we can answer to the question uh, we had, and uh, we can say we have 50 samples per species, which is what uh, we have if we look at the tutorial and you can always check the solution. So we indeed have 50 samples per, um, per category. So the next question, we would like to ask is uh, to see if we can differentiate the different iris species. So we know we have three species, we know we have 50 sample uh, per species. Um, and now we would like to see if uh, the information we have in the data set uh, is sufficient to distinguish uh, three different uh, type of uh, iris flower. Um, so if we look at the iris flower, let, let's look at the figure here. We know we have three different kind of uh, flowers, iris flower, versicolor, virginica, and cetosa. Um, and uh, we have some information in the data set. We have the petal lens, petal width, and the sepal lens and sepal width. And with this 
can we uh, distinguish between these different categories? So um, just to make sure you, we know what we are talking about, the petal is this one, so this uh, small uh, interior one, and we have the uh, lens and width, and the same for the sepal, we have the lens, the lens and the width here. Um, so here, this is not so obvious from the picture, and it's very hard for us to distinguish the three different species, but let's see if uh, uh, using this information, we can get some, uh, some uh, info on uh, the different species and distinguish. What we will use is a, a very, very useful tool, which is um, a tool called DataMash, and uh, it uh, gives us some descriptive uh, statistics and a summary about the data set, very, very useful. Um, and we will uh, use it uh, with the different operation, we'll perform different operation on, the, on this uh, data set. So we'll always group uh, with colon five because this is a different species and we want to do an analysis per species. Uh, we'll use as an input the iris tabula. Uh, it will have a, a, a header, yeah. We'll print the header line, yes. Uh, we'll sort the input, uh, yes. So to have all the different categories together. And uh, um, then we'll make some operation. We'll make the mean, a standard deviation uh, for each of the different columns. So C, C1, C2, C3, and C4, which if we look back uh, into the iris tabular data set, this is here, this one, if you remember. Uh, one, C1, C2, C3, and C4 are the different uh, characteristics, the lens of the sepal and the width, and the petal lens and petal width. Let's do that. So we could do this data mesh. And we select, uh, make sure you select the right data set, and we want to select this iris tabular. So we want to group by field. The field is five. So here we don't put the C five. We put only a number in, uh, in this field. Um, does the input file has a header? Yes, it has a header. And we want to print the header at the end. So it will be easier to distinguish the different values. We want to sort the input. Um, and we don't want to print all the fields, ignore the take it. Uh, in your case when grouping, this is not relevant for us because these are only numbers. So we can add different uh, operation. Let's uh, for the first operation, instead of the count, we'll, uh, we'll do the uh, average, the mean value, and we'll do it on the colon one, yes. And we can insert a second operation. Uh, again on colon one, but instead of the mean value, we can have um, the sample uh, standard deviation. I don't see it. I, so you can start writing actually, yeah, st sample standard deviation again on colon one, and we'll repeat this uh, op operation, but on the different colons, so C2, C3, and C4. So I will add the same. But here, make sure you select C2, and this is mean value. I will insert again, and this is the sample standard deviation, and make sure you use the right colon, C2, colon two. Again, I insert a new operation uh, on colon three. Yeah, sorry, and this is the mean value, and uh, the sample, standard deviation on colon three. And finally, the two last operation, mean value on colon four and the sample standard deviation on colon four. And then I execute. And again, I will rename the data set.
so it is running. Okay, so again, don't forget to rename your data set. Always very good practice to rename and we'll rename the data set to Iris Summary, uh, summary and Statistics. And I click on Save. Um, now we can click on the view data button and we have all the different statistics so the question is can we differentiate the different iris flower species so you can um, you can pause uh, the video if you want and uh, take a closer look to have uh, uh, and try to answer to the question so here if we look at the setosa verticular and uh, virginica from the results um, we have the mean balance, and this is the standard deviation. Uh, this is uh, mean sepal width and the standard deviation. And the same for the petal. So if I uh, look at this colon, uh, this is very close from each other. Uh, same for the standard deviation, even though the CITOSA has a smaller standard deviation for the sepal length. Uh, here we have a few differences, but this is not very significant. Uh, standard deviation are very similar. Uh, but here, this is uh, quite interesting, actually. If we look at uh, the first species, the setosa, the mean petal length is much smaller compared to a versicolor and virginica. Uh, and the last colon for standard deviation, nothing very significant. Um, and the petal width is also quite uh, smaller compared to uh, the two other species. Um, so, I mean, what uh, we can uh, see for the uh, iris, this petal lens here, um, it is quite significant, the difference between uh, this species with, oops, which is Setosa and uh, the Versicolor and Virginica. So what we can say is we can distinguish quite easily Setosa species from the two other, but at least from looking at the values here, um, it's much harder to say anything about uh, Versicolor and Virginica. It's not so easy to distinguish the two uh, species. Um, so the next, what uh, we will do is uh, we will visualize uh, this uh, different feature into a, a two dimensional scatter plot. So maybe we'll see a bit more uh, what is going on and we'll see if we can distinguish uh, these uh, uh, three different data sets. So I go back here um, and this is what we have done. Um, so can we differentiate the different flowers and you can read the solution, but this is more or less what I have told you, that we can differentiate uh, uh, the iris setosa from the two others, but not uh, differentiate the iris uh, versicolor from the iris uh, virginica. So let's uh, make a scatter plot and we'll uh, make the, a scatter plot, which is what we, we see here. Um, and uh, we'll take the iris clean data set as an input. So if you remember, iris clean doesn't have any header uh, and we'll plot the colon one. So uh, remember the colon one, uh, if we took, go back here, let's take the clean, this, this one, the iris tabula, because we have the name of the column. Uh, so we have the lens uh, and the width for the sepal and the lens and the width for 
the beta. So what we will plot is uh, um, as an axis, we'll uh, plot the separate lines and uh, on uh, vertical, we'll plot uh, on the y axis, we'll plot the separate widths. Let's do that. We'll uh, always give uh, some uh, title uh, here for the plot. Uh, and we'll also give some label, separate lines and separate widths. And uh, we'll also, uh, in the advanced option, we can choose the size of the points to make it uh, a bit li larger and easier to, to, to visualize. And we put all the data set, uh, all the different groups. So we'll group them by uh, uh, the same different species, uh, and uh, which is the column five. And we'll put all the different them in the same on the same plot and the output will be pdf okay so let's do that we click here input uh, make sure you take the right and uh, we'll take the iris clean because it does uh, uh, you need to have uh, no header um, instead of colon eight we'll take the colon one and the colon two as y We'll put a title, which is a sepal lens as a function of sepal width, because we are using the two first uh, column. Um, we'll give a title for the Y, always nice to make a proper plot, sepal lens and sepal width. And uh, we'll click on the advanced option. So you see these options, um, they are collapsed by default. So you have uh, an eye and it's, uh, it's crossed to so say it's not visible. But if you uh, click, left click, it will expand and you see all the different options you can use. And uh, here um, we'll have point only, yes. Uh, and uh, we will use uh, data point option. So instead of the default user defined point option, and we put the size here and we'll change from one to two to make it a bit larger. We don't change the transparency. Uh, another thing we'll do is uh, to plot the multiple group, yes. And we'll put them on one plot to have all the different groups. And uh, we need to specify the colon to differentiate the different groups. And we know this is colon five. This is where we have the category. Uh, color schemes to differentiate your group. Uh, we'll choose a predefined set to predefined color uh, palette. You can uh, test a different uh, uh, scheme if you want to. Uh, let's choose the default uh, for, no, change the default for the output. Yeah. Instead of VNG, we'll choose PDF. And I click on execute. Once this is uh, running, we'll have two output, obviously. I probably added one. Let's check, this is PDF. Yes, so I have my plot here. Uh, and if I uh, look carefully, um, so what does this uh, scatter plot tell us about iris uh, spaces? So here we again we see this is uh, uh, very different. This uh, setosa is always very different from the two other species, and the iris versicolor and virginica, as we said and uh, as we have observed before, it's very hard to distinguish the two species. We can uh, rerun the same tool again, but instead of uh, uh, using the uh, uh, sepal lens and width we can do the same plot, but with a petal lens and petal width. So using the, uh, the other uh, two other columns. Let's do that. 
I will rerun. So remember to rerun, you can click on this. Uh, and we don't want to have one and two, we have want to have three and four. And instead of sepal, this is petal. Uh, petal lens, and here I need to change. This is a petal lens as a function of the petal width. And this is uh, uh, on the x axis, we have petal lens. On the y axis, we have petal width. Uh, option, advanced option will not change the advanced option. I think we can do the same and we can rerun. So this is quite easy to rerun. already run. Let's view. Oops. Oh, it didn't work for some reason. Oh, yeah. Click again and uh, it took a bit uh, of time to load. Now I have it. And again, always very easy to distinguish the Setosa species from the two other one and uh, still not so easy to distinguish. We always have this some points where we are not sure if this is a versicolor or virginica. So um, still uh, a bit better actually to differentiate between the three species. But for some sample, uh, the petal lens versus uh, width is uh, still insufficient for, for all this data here. Um, well, this one is always super easy to, to distinguish. So we have done quite an extensive analysis uh, of this data set. We would probably need more tools or different tools to uh, distinguish the three species, but we have already a fairly good idea of uh, um, the different uh, species of this iris uh, flower data set. So we have finished our analysis and uh, now the next step as uh, we will see here is uh, to convert the analysis we have in the history into a workflow. So um, why? Because we will apply the same analysis but on a different data set, a completely different data set, which is uh, one of the most powerful feature of Galaxy uh, to create a workflow out of uh, history of uh, the different steps you have done and uh, reuse it again, so fully reproducible in the, with the same data set and with a different data set. So um, we'll first save, extract the workflow, save it, um, make sure we have only the different steps we want to have in, uh, in the workflow, uh, give a name, uh, and uh, uh, then apply it on a different data set. So let's do that first. I will extract, so I will make sure first uh, I check. Oops, Oops. it's a bit slow. Uh, yeah, I will check check first. We have only the steps I want to keep in the workflow, and I extract workflow. I can check again here, and you can tick or untick one step. The first step, which is upload of a, of a file, is uh, treated as an input data set, which is what we want, because we will apply the same analysis, but on a different data set. Uh, make sure you give a meaningful name to your uh, workflow. So for instance, here we will call it exploring um, high risk data set with statistics and scatter plots, which is what we have done. And then finally we create workflow. So all the workflows, all your workflow will be uh, available when you click here on workflow. Uh, and the latest one is always uh, the one you have at the top. So here, uh, for instance, exploring iris dataset with statistics and scatter plot. 
you can run it directly, but we first will edit. You see, if you click on the small uh, triangle, you have different menu here, a menu with different option, and we'll first click on edit. We go to the workflow editor, uh, so it shows all the different steps of your workflow. If you click on one task, the detail uh, of the uh, of the task of the tool is uh, available on the right hand side here. Um, and in particular, what we can do is, for instance, uh, remove all the intermediate files created and only keep the results of the analysis. So, for instance, here, this is a, a result we want to have uh, to keep, which is uh, um, it will return the different categories. Uh, this is also a different result. There is no other task, but this one is not. So we can remove the intermediate file by uh, unticking the task, the, the box here. And you can do the same for all the different intermediate steps. You do not want to keep the file. So it will reduce the file you can see in your history. So it's cleaner and it's easier to uh, get uh, to view the, the result uh, from your uh, workflow. One of the things you can do is uh, when you click on a task, uh, if you see the out file here is uh, the name of the output, it's not very meaningful, but you can give a better name uh, for your history by clicking here on the, the configure output. So it's a hidden by default, you can click and it will expand. And you have this renamed data set. So here, for instance, we can call it categories. Um, or unique categories. Yeah. Uh, we can do the same for every single output. So here, this is uh, the same um, categories, but from the group. But we can also call it categories. categories from group. So if we want to distinguish, this is what we will see in the history. Uh, but this one is a number of samples. So we can uh, here, this is um, sample uh, pair categories. And for the scatter plot, you can give some uh, names for each of the plot. Uh, Figure one, for instance, and this is dot. Uh, this is the PNG file, and make sure you have two. We have two outputs now. Uh, we can rename the data set figure one dot PDF, and uh, we'll do the same for the second plot. Uh, so figure took 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 here. Rename data set figure two dot PNG, and the same for the figure two. PDF, uh, dot PDF. Okay, so now we are more or less ready. Don't forget to save. So here you see at the top, save workflow, very important. You don't want to lose all your changes. Looks perfect. So now we can click on analyze data again. And uh, we are ready to apply the same workflow, but on a different data set. So let's see what kind of data set we can use. Um, so here we will use an existing data set, uh, which we have, which is a diamond data set. So instead of analyzing flowers, we'll uh, analyze diamonds, but we'll do very similar analysis. Um, so here, so we'll upload a new data set. So we'll create a new history. So if you remember, uh, I said at the very beginning, every time you do a new analysis, it's a good practice to create a, a new history. So we'll create a new history and uh, we'll call it diamond analysis and uh, we'll upload the data set uh, and uh, um, then we'll rename the data set as we always do to remove all the different uh, um, prefix here from the uh, website from Zenodo uh, and we'll add a tag and we'll use this hash sign to make sure um, it is propagated when we will run the workflow. So here's copy here. And then we finally uh, will run it. And I will uh, explain before I run it uh, this data set itself. So let's do that. Let's create a new history. Create new history. Oops, sorry. It's 
change the name, diamond, analyze this, and enter, upload, and paste and fetch. I will paste the address and I will start. Then I wait. Now it's green. Remember what we have to do. I will first rename. I will call it diamonds. I click on save. I check the data type. This is CSV. Perfect. And I can have a look at the data set itself to get uh, an idea of uh, the content. Uh, very similar to the previous data set. We have one, two, three, four, five colon. Uh, and this is the header, uh, the name of, uh, of the colon. So the first colon is the cara, so this is uh, proportional to the weight of the diamond. The second one is the price. Um, I guess this is in US dollar. Um, and then we have the different categories for uh, color and clarity. Uh, and this is here the cut. So different uh, cuts, uh, if this is ideal, premium, good, or very good. I think there are a few categories and this is what we want to know, uh, how many category, categories we have um, and if there are any uh, links between this, uh, uh, for instance, the weight and the price and uh, for instance, the clarity of the cut. Uh, let's go back here to the training. Um, so the diamond data set is, uh, is very well known for the ggplot2 package. It's developed by uh, Hadley and Wick, Wick, Hadley Wickham. Um, so it's a very much uh, used data set. And uh, this is a quite simple data set here, uh, simpler than the original data set. Uh, it only shows the five columns because we want to reuse the same workflow uh, for uh, this new data set. Um, and uh, um, so we have only the four uh, characteristics we have kept, kept the cara, cut, color, and clarity, which is what we call the 4C. So the cara refers to the weight of the diamond and is uh, um, when it's measured on the scale. And the cut refers to the quality of the cut and can take uh, different grades. And this is what we will see later. And we have different colors. So the color, so it's like the tint uh, of the diamond uh, from uh, colorless, so uh, white to yellow. And there, there is a, a, a later a scale ranging from D to Z and D is the best and the, uh, Z is the worst. So if we look at here, you will understand more. So this is this color from D to Z here. Uh, and of course, uh, in uh, Galaxy, instead of letters, we have replaced by number starting from uh, one to uh, the numbers here. And we did uh, um, the same for, for the clarity. So uh, the clarity is the, describes the amount and location of naturally occurring inclusions found in, uh, in uh, all diamonds. And it has a scale of uh, 11 grades ranging from flawless, so this is the best uh, ideal situation, to I3, which uh, uh, is uh, like level three. This is a uh, worse quality uh, elsewhere. Sorry. Um, and this is what we can see here. This is from this flawless to uh, here, this is level uh, three. And again, we have put uh, uh, numbers uh, rather than uh, categories here in, in the data sets. So if we look at the data set here, um, the color and clarity will, uh, they both are numbers integer. Okay, let's go back here. And uh, now what uh, we want to do is to run the workflow uh, on this uh, diamond uh, data set. Um, and uh, we will run it uh, exactly in, a, uh, in the same way. But for, for the plots, uh, we'll always uh, plot uh, uh, with the two first columns. 
to the CARA enterprise. I mean, the color will not be taken into account uh, uh, because we know this is not the most interesting, but the, the CARA, so the weight of, um, of the diamond and the price, uh, it's interesting to see if this is related, for instance, to the clarity and uh, to the cut. So let's do that. The workflow is, uh, is here, if you remember. I will take the last one, uh, which is this exploring uh, iris data set with statistics and scatter plot. And this time I, I want to run it. So I will click on run. Um, I'll make sure the input data set is uh, the right one. Yes, this is this one. I will expand uh, the workflow because I want to customize. Um, and in particular, I want to customize the plots because we said we always want to plot uh, um, the same. Uh, we always want to plot the diamond price as a function of the of the car of the of the weight. So this the two first colon here, but uh, the first plot uh, um, with uh, with the cut as the factor and the second. Uh, plot with the clarity as a factor. So uh, let's find the plots. First one, we have a scatter plot here. So we want the colon one and colon two. Yes, uh, the plot of the title I will customize because this is definitely not sepal lens. So I have a diamond a price as a function of Cara. So that's a function of the weight. Uh, and uh, with clarity, I uh, know with, um, with cut as a factor. Uh, so let's first change the label. Uh, so the label X will be the weight of the diamond. Uh, which is a cara, we said this is proportional and the Y label uh, will be the price, diamond price. So the price, and we can see this is in US dollars. This is in, in useful information. Uh, and because we want to take the factor, this is a cut, let's, let's check. Da, da, da. Yes. So we are using the latest colon, which is one, two, three, four, five. So this is a cut. So this is correct for this one. Uh, so now we can up, close this one, and we'll take the second plot uh, and we'll change it because we still want to keep the same two colons. Uh, and we'll do again. Uh, but this time, this is uh, the diamond price as a function of Cara. But this time, we'll take the clarity as a factor. So we again have the same. This is the weight diamond, this is a carrot, this is proportional, and the Y label is the price in US dollars. Advanced option, you click here to expand, um, and uh, we want to make sure we take the right column, so this time we don't take the last one, but we take the clarity, so we change it. Uh, from five to four. Um, yes, and that's it. So we have everything. We can expand here and we can run the workflow. So you can see all the different steps. It will start running. So it starts to launch, to launch some jobs. And uh, let's look at uh, the questions we want to answer. The very bottom now. 
Yeah, so we are here. We, have, we are running the workflow on different data. We have done this. Uh, and what uh, we want to answer is how many cut categories are there in the diamond data set? How many samples are there in each cut category? And so if you remember, the output will be categories and the sample per category. Um, and uh, um, we'll see if we can notice anything about the, uh, the relationship between the price and the carat. Uh, and based on the plot showing price versus carat with clarity as a factor, do you think clarity accounts for some of the variance in price uh, and why? Okay, so let's uh, wait for uh, the analysis to be done. So you see, this is very nice. Everything is uh, running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have. Uh, unique categories, we can already, to answer the first question, how many categories do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So we have five categories, and these categories are fair, good, ideal, premium, and very good. Um, so how many samples uh, do we have per uh, cut or per category? Um, so we have this category from groups and... Uh, Is it this one? Yeah, I forgot to rename, obviously. Uh, so we have uh, um, for the fair category, 1,610. And uh, for uh, the very good category, we have uh, 12,082 samples. So we have a very uneven number of, uh, of sample per category. Quite a lot of ideal, actually. Um, so now let's go back based on the plot. So let's have a look. Uh, what do you notice? Uh, do you notice any relationship between the price and the carat? So if we look at, uh, uh, for instance, this data match. Um, so if we look at the price, Uh, this is all the statics, statistics here. Uh, we cannot really uh, differentiate much, I think. Uh, let's look at the figure. Um, so if we look at the figure one, for instance, So this is the weight and the price. So there is obviously a link between um, the price and the weight. So if uh, the price uh, more or less increases quite, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's not fully linear, but it's, there is a trend to have higher price if this is a, a larger diamond, uh, if the weight is uh, is higher. Um, now let's look at the other plot, figure two, which is uh, as a factor, uh, the clarity, so the different clarity. So if you remember, uh, clarity is here. This is uh, uh, flawless, so it's very good uh, diamond. And this one is uh, uh, L3, which is uh, uh, lowest category. So do we see uh, anything here? Um, so what can we see? Um, so far, so we see this vertical stripe already. It's quite uh, clear on this uh, on these plots. If we take one weight so for instance let's take this value here for one carat uh, we can see there is a link between uh, the price and uh, and the clarity so for uh, if you have a flawless diamond which is like this this one here uh, it's a much higher price than uh, l3 or this uh, uh, i L3 uh, 
clarity, which many of them for the same weight will be here, so much cheaper. So there is obviously a, a link between the two. So the clarity, we can see that the clarity explains quite a lot. Uh, um, the price, this is quite uh, linked. Um, so, okay, now we have to uh, analyze this uh, new data set. Um, so one of the most important features, and this is really the last step here, is to share uh, the work, to share the, for instance, both the history and uh, both uh, uh, the workflow. And this is one of the most important features of Galaxy, uh, which you do at the end. So we can share the history. Uh, and uh, for this, uh, let's do this. If I want to share my history, I will go here and the history action, and you can see the share and publish. Uh, so by default, this is uh, uh, not, this is private history, so I'm the only one to be able to see the history and the data. I can make the history accessible. Um, so I can make the history publicly available in the published history. Uh, or I can choose to share to share um, with a user, so only with a single Galaxy user, which can be useful uh, if you have a colleague and you want to share the results. So here, I'm not do it, um, and you want to share the results of uh, your analysis or your history. Uh, but this is like preliminary preliminary results, and uh, this is not something you can really publish. So if uh, you make your history public, for instance here, share and public, and I make history accessible, uh, I can give the URL here and anyone can access this. And I can also tick here, make history public available in the published history. And I click on it, you will see all the different history histories uh, um, everyone has shared. So it takes a bit of time because it's quite big. So the default setting for the history and for the data set uh, can be different from uh, one uh, instance to another. So. Um, for some uh, Galaxy instance, uh, you will have to uh, specifically um, make each data set public. So be aware and uh, check when you share your history. Okay, here, this is all the different uh, uh, latest uh, published history. So I, I can see mine here which is uh, quite useful. And you can also, if uh, there is one uh, user sharing the history with you, you will uh, see it in the here and the history shared with me. So here I have no history shared. Uh, so no one has shared the history with me. Um, and uh, I think that's it for this uh, tutorial. Um, to summarize um, what we have done, so we have learned the basic uh, of Galaxy, the basics uh, of Galaxy. Um, now we know how to keep all the different records of all uh, the steps of the analysis. We can reuse the same steps, but uh, with a different data set, which is very powerful. Um, we can import data from external sources. Uh, you have seen we have uh, imported data from uh, Zenodo, but we can also import data set from uh, different uh, external resources. Uh, and we can easily share the results. So, and uh, you can choose how you share your results. If you want to share with everyone, if you want to publish your history, or if you only want to share with uh, one colleague or uh, your group, for instance. Um, and that's it. Don't uh, forget to um, give some feedback on, uh, on the training. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, thank you for uh, your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, please ask in, uh, in the Slack channel. Thank you.